Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving an equation with inverse trigonometric functions. For those of you who are not familiar with arc sine and arc cosine, they just mean inverse sine and inverse cosine. So, if you wanted to try this problem yourself first, uh, this is a good point to pause the video and then you can go ahead and check out the solution. All right, let's see what happens. So we have a sum of two cubes here. So I'm going to go ahead and take advantage of an identity, which can be written as a plus b quantity cubed. And you know that uh, this can be written as a cubed plus b cubed plus 3ab. And you know that 3a squared b plus 3ab squared. But I can factor out the 3ab and write it like this. My goal is to get a cubed plus b cubed by itself. So I can go ahead and write the sum of the two cubes as a plus b quantity cubed minus 3ab multiplied by a plus b. So this is one of the identities we're going to use. And the second identity we're going to use comes from the sum of arc sine x. Like I said earlier, these are inverse trigonometric functions, nothing else. We know that the sum of these two quantities is equal to pi over 2 because the angle whose sine is x and the angle whose cosine is x, they have to be complementary angles. If you draw a right triangle, you're going to know what I'm talking about. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, substitute these into our equation. And uh, we can actually go ahead and use uh, an identity here, for example, we can um, replace our cosine x with arc cosine x with pi over 2 minus arc sine x. And then if we use substitution, let's say arc sine x is equal to y, then this quantity is going to equal pi over 2 minus y. So we're going to go ahead and substitute those into our equation. And uh, we should be getting the following. Uh, since we have the sum of the two cubes on the left hand side, we're going to be writing the right hand side. So a plus b is going to be pi over uh, so basically what I'm trying to do here is replace the a with arc sine x, right? So let me go ahead and kind of explain a little bit here. So arc sine x cubed plus arc cosine x cubed is equal to arc sine x plus arc cosine x quantity cubed from here minus three times arc sine x, arc cosine x, multiplied by arc sine x plus arc cosine x. Okay? If you do the substitutions here, arc sine x plus arc cosine x is equal to pi over 2. So we'll be getting pi over 2 cubed minus, now, arc sine x is equal to y, and arc cosine x is equal to pi over 2 minus y. And then multiply this by arc sine x plus arc cosine x, and that's equal to pi over 2. And this whole thing is going to equal alpha times pi cubed. Okay? So, we have this equation, uh, and y is the only variable in this equation if we treat alpha as just a given number. And of course, uh, you can go ahead and divide by pi here, let's go ahead and do that and expand this. So this would be pi cubed over 8, but since you're going to divide by pi, it's going to be pi squared over 8. And then this is going to give me 3y multiplied by pi over 2 minus y, multiply by pi over 2, multiply, uh, divide by pi, it's going to give us 1 half. And dividing the right hand side by pi is going to give us alpha times pi squared. So in other words, uh, this is going to be basically, uh, when we distribute this, we're going to be getting y squared, uh, pi is a constant, uh, so we're going to be getting a quadratic equation in y. I'm going to just skip the details here and just go ahead and write down what the equation is going to look like. Uh, so our equation after simplification is going to look like this, the quadratic, 12y squared minus 6pi y plus one minus eight alpha, and that comes from the fact that we're multiplying both sides by eight to get rid of the fractions, multiply by pi squared, 
is equal to zero. And as you know, y is equal to arc sine x here, which is the inverse function for sine x. Okay? All right, so we have a quadratic equation, so we're going to go ahead and solve this quadratic uh, for y, and then we're going to be looking at different options. So let's go ahead and uh, check the discriminant for this equation first. So if you go ahead and write the discriminant, which is going to be negative b, oh, I'm sorry, that, that's the equation, right? So the discriminant is going to be b squared minus 4ac, so that's going to be b squared minus 4 times a times c, and here c is a constant, so the whole thing basically is going to be c, because alpha and pi squared are both treated as constants. Okay? Uh, there's actually something nice about this, but let's go ahead and expand it first. This is going to be 36 pi squared, and then this should be minus 48 pi squared multiplied by 1 minus 8 alpha. Now, we can actually go ahead and divide both sides by 4, uh, but that's not a big deal. So let's go ahead and just factor out the 4. Uh, if we do that, we can actually do a little bit more than that. So let's go ahead and find um, the, let's see. We can actually distribute this. Let's go ahead and do that first. So because that's going to simplify anyways. So this is going to be negative 48 pi squared plus 48 pi squared multiplied by 8 alpha. The reason why I didn't multiply those numbers is because I'm going to go ahead and simplify this. So discriminant is going to equal 48 times 8 pi squared alpha minus, if you subtract, you're going to get minus 12 pi squared. Okay, so we can actually go ahead and factor out some numbers here. 12 is a common factor, pi squared is a common factor, so we can take out 12 pi squared, 12 pi squared, and then that should give us a 4 here and an 8 here. That's going to give us 32 alpha minus 1. Now, this is the important part because we know that 12 pi squared is always positive. So in order for the discriminant to be positive or negative, we're going to check this quantity here. Okay, so now we have three cases. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at all these cases. The first case is when the discriminant which is the delta is less than zero. In this case, there are no solutions. But when does that happen? When 32 alpha minus one is less than, 32 alpha minus one is less than zero, meaning that alpha is less than one over 32. In this case, there are no real solutions. Okay, this is the first case. The second case is we're gonna be looking at the discriminant being equal to zero, meaning that alpha is equal to one over 32. And in this case, we have one real solution. We have one real solution in this case. And the solution is actually, uh, can be found by, if you go back to the equation um, or consider the formula for the quadratic, negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, you're going to notice that the y is going to equal uh, 3 pi squared over 12 pi. So you should also remember that when the roots are equal, when there's one real solution, that one solution is equal to negative b over 2a. So you could also use that to find the solution. And if you simplify this, this is going to become pi over 4. And as you know, y is equal to arc sine x, which is the inverse sine. If that is equal to pi over 4, then x is going to equal sine pi over 4, which is equal to root 2 over 2. So we do get a real solution from here, but only one solution. Okay? Now, the third case scenario is when the discriminant is greater than zero and that means that alpha is greater than 1 over 32 and now we're going to be getting two solutions let's go ahead and write them down those solutions are going to look like this 3 pi squared plus minus the square root of 3 pi to the fourth multiplied by 
32 alpha minus 1. I'm skipping the details here. And then this whole thing is multiplied, I'm sorry, divided by 12 pi. And then uh, if you go ahead and simplify this a little bit, and you should be getting something like pi over 12 times 3 plus minus the square root of 3 times 32 alpha minus 1. Okay? So that's going to be our y value. So from here, we're basically going to be getting two different solutions with the plus minus. And remember that y is equal to arc sine x. So we're going to be able to find the uh, x values by signing actually both sides. But here's one thing that we need to consider. Arc sine x, arc sine x changes on the interval negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Okay? So we just need to make sure that uh, there are no other restrictions on the alpha. So basically, if you go ahead and replace these with the y values, we're going to be getting negative pi over 2 is less than or equal to one of the y values, which I can use the positive one first. The square root of this quantity, which is the y value, needs to be between pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. And obviously, the left inequality is always right because this is definitely greater than a negative uh, quantity because 3 plus something is, uh, you know, greater than or equal to 3. And so this is going to be greater than or equal to pi over 4. Okay, so that's satisfied already. So we just need to look at the other one, meaning that uh, we can just go ahead and actually multiply the right hand side by 6 and divide by 6 so that we can get a common denominator so that it looks like 6 pi over 12 and we can just go ahead and uh, just cross out the pi over 12 from both sides and we end up with 1 here obviously this should be um, yeah that's the quantity that I have and uh, from here we're going to be getting a much simpler inequality so because multiplying by 1 doesn't really change anything so 3 plus the, and if, if I go ahead and distribute that, I'm going to be getting this radical is less than or equal to 6. Subtracting 3 from both sides and squaring both sides gives us 96 alpha minus 3 is less than or equal to uh, <clears throat> 9. And uh, we're going to be adding 3 to both sides and that's going to give us 12. Okay? And eventually we have to divide both sides by 96. And that should give us 12 over 96, which can be written as 1 eighth. Now, earlier, when we looked at the different cases, we said that for alpha equals 132, 1 over 32, we have one solution. And if alpha is greater than 1 over 32, then we have two real solutions. But now we got an additional restriction on alpha, which we also have to consider. But this is just part of the picture. Now we have to check the other solution, the y value, make sure that it is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 because it's an arc sine value. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that here. Negative pi over 2 needs to be less than or equal to pi over 12. Then my equation was the minus version of this 3 minus the square root of 96 alpha minus 3. And that needs to be less than or equal to pi over 2. Now, we have a different scenario here because the left-hand side is not always guaranteed. So what we need to do is we need to consider both. But if you go ahead and take care of all the uh, pies and the fractions and everything, we're going to be ending up with a nicer way. And remember, last time we had a 6. So this time it's going to be a negative 6 on the left-hand side. And it's going to look like this when I simplify. And I need to simplify just a little bit more by subtracting 3 from both sides and then dividing everything by uh, negative 1, uh, we're going to be end up uh, with negative 3 less than or equal to the square root of 96 alpha minus 3, and that is less than or equal to 9. Okay? And of course, we need to square both sides. Uh, and when you square 96 alpha minus 3 is going to equal... 81. On the right hand, on the left hand side, it's going to be greater or equal to uh, 9, but 
that's already satisfied. So we're just gonna go ahead and take a look at this. Adding three to both sides, that's gonna give us 84. And 84 and 96 are both multiples of 12, aren't they? So it's gonna be seven over eight, okay? So we basically need to put these restrictions together on alpha, and then we, we're going to arrive at a different way of writing the solution, okay? So this means that if alpha is between one over 32 and one over eight, then we have two solutions as stated earlier, sine pi over 12. So, so what we do is we got the y value, right? So y is equal to arc sine x. So x is equal to sine y. Let's go ahead and write that here. X is equal to sine y because y is equal to arc sine x. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, to find the x value. I'm going to write, be writing the y inside the parentheses uh, so that I can sign it. Okay. So x is going to equal sine pi over 12 multiplied by 3 plus minus the square root of 96 alpha minus 3. Okay. So I guess I don't need an extra parenthesis either. Okay. So, and if, what happens if alpha is equal to 1 over 8? Then obviously you can just go ahead and replace alpha with 1 over 8 in this equation to see what happens. Then we get x equals sine pi over 12 multiplied by 3 plus minus 3 because when alpha is 1 over 8, that's going to give you another 3 there if you substitute. And this should equal two different values. One of them is going to be x equals sine pi over 12 multiplied by 6, which is pi over 2. And sine pi over 2 is equal to 1. And the other one is going to be sine 0. And that's equal to 0. Okay. So this pretty much concludes the solution. Let's go ahead and write down the answer in a more compact way. Uh, so we can safely say that if alpha is less than 1 over 32, then there are no real solutions. Okay. If alpha is equal to 1 over 32, then x is going to equal 1 over root 2. Remember, we found this uh, by calculating the sine pi over 4 at the beginning. And if alpha is between... 1 over 32 and 1 over 8. We have to exclude the 1 over 8 here because we get a particular solution from there. X is going to equal sine. Actually, we don't really have to exclude those, but that's okay. Let's just separate them. Pi over 12 multiplied by 3 plus minus the square root of 96 alpha minus 3. And the last one is going to be if a is equal to, I'm sorry, alpha is equal to 1 eighth, not a, that should be an alpha, is equal to 1 over 8, then we're going to get x equals 0 or x equals 1, which is what, what we just found here. Okay, so that basically just sums up all the solutions. You can write this as a piecewise defined function as well, but those are all the solutions. Thank you for watching. Uh, the solution was a little long, I realize, but that's just a problem with a parameter and they tend to get uh, complicated. But thanks for watching and uh, please comment and subscribe and see you in the next video. Until then, have a good one. Bye-bye.